Tasmania is a very popular holiday destination in Australia, especially during summer. This video will share with you our wonderful Tassie experiences from our recent 13-day road trip around the island, itinerary, top things to do and Tassie food. All you need to know to plan your Tasmania trip in one video. With four distinct seasons each with its own beauty, Tasmania is a year-round destination. December to February in summer is generally considered the best season to visit Tasmania as the weather is warm, and beaches are warm enough to swim. Accommodation and car rental can be really expensive and difficult to book during these peak seasons. You should plan your trip well in advance. Tasmania is the coldest state in Australia and the weather can change quickly here. It can be really cold and windy even in summer, especially in the mountainous areas like Cradle Mountains or Mount Wellington in Hobart. Be prepared, pack warm, fast drying layers for maximum flexibility. There are many possible itineraries to travel around Tasmania depending on your schedule, full round trip. One city trip either Hobart only or Launceston only. Full East Coast. Half East Coast. Or half West trip. If you have two weeks, you can do a full road trip around the island. For example if you arrive in Hobart, you can drive via the East Coast region to Launceston, then Cradle Mountain, then Queenstown, and then back to Hobart. Details of our two-week itinerary is in the description below for your reference. If you only stay in Hobart, three to four days are enough to explore the city of Hobart and do day trips such as to Bruny Island, Waterfalls, National Park, and Port Arthur. If you only stay in Launceston, two to three days are enough to explore the city and do day trips to either Cradle Mountain, East Coast, or the Tamer Valley Wine Route. Or you can do half of the Tasmania Island trip from Hobart to Cradle Mountain and Launceston. With Most people will get here by plane or ferry of the Spirit of Tasmania. The best way to travel around is by car, either bringing your own or renting a car. If you plan to visit national parks, you can purchase all park passes for your car to save money. If you're in the city of Hobart you can choose the hop on hop on buses which take you to the main attractions of Hobart City. Cradle Mountain is a place of exceptional natural beauty in the heart of the Tasmanian Wilderness World Heritage Area. It is the sixth highest mountain in Tasmania and is one of the state's most iconic sites. You can either choose to climb the Cradle Mountain Summit which can be reached on a long day walk 8 hour return or just do the easy lake walks. It is so beautiful and worth the effort to get there. Hobart is the capital and most populous city of Tasmania with almost half of all Tasmanians living here. It is one of the most visited places in Tasmania, especially for first-time visitors. Three to four days is about the right amount of time to visit all the highlights of Hobart. Two days are to explore the city, waterfront precinct, brewery and winery, Salamanca Market, Botanic Garden, Mount Wellington, and museums. Day 3 or 4 are for day trips to Bruny Island, Port Arthur, and the Tasman Peninsula. Heritage Horse-Drawn Carriages operates horse tours of the Hobart Waterfront and Battery Point. 
If you don't have a car or can't walk much, you can take the Hop on Hop Off Bus Red Decker to explore Hobart's attractions and landmark. Wharf Precinct is a lovely waterfront area with shops, restaurants, and especially floating shops. You should definitely try one of the best Tasmanian ice creams at this floating creamery ice cream shop. It is a great leisure walk around Hobart City and seeing many gorgeous Georgian, Victorian, and Edwardian architecture and buildings. Mount Wellington is a must-see when you're in Hobart. It is the best place to have spectacular views overlooking Hobart and its surroundings. There is a great indoor viewing platform to take in the view. It is about 17 kilometers or 25 minutes easy drive from Hobart CBD. Salamanca Market is a street market in Salamanca Place. It is one of Tasmania's most visited tourist attractions. You can find here the biggest selection of Tasmania's locally made products, glass, timbers, clothes, jewelry, artworks, leather goods, food and drink, and local agriculture products. Cascade Brewery is a brewery established in 1824 in South Hobart and is the oldest continually operating brewery in Australia. There is a restaurant inside with beer tasting and beer produced right here. The garden is beautiful and relaxing. You can book a historic tour or brewery tour which includes a refreshing tasting paddle of four Cascade beers. Yeah, that's you know they have a that way? Yeah. Not, they weren't all right. Your mum picked all the right ones. The Royal Tasmanian Botanical Gardens is Australia's second oldest established in 1818. These gardens are home to the largest collection of mature conifers in the Southern Hemisphere. There's a Japanese garden. The Tasmanian Museum and Art Gallery is a great place for families to learn and have fun. It has excellent collections of old and new art, historical Tasmanian information, great indigenous culture, and history displays. The Museum of Old and New Art Mona is the largest privately funded art museum in the Southern Hemisphere. If time is available, you can do some interesting day trips to Port Arthur, Tarman Peninsula, or Bruny Island. Port Arthur Historic Site was a 19th-century penal settlement and is now an open-air museum. 
Ruins include the huge penitentiary and the remaining shell of the convict church. The site is a beautiful place with rich Australian history value and is an icon of Tasmania. The Tasman Peninsula in the southeast of Tasmania is about a 1.5-hour drive from Hobart. You can comfortably visit just Port Arthur on a day trip from Hobart. If you have time, I would suggest staying two or three days exploring this beautiful peninsula. Highlights of the Tasman Peninsula are the Port Arthur Historic Site, Tasman Arch, Devil's Kitchen, Blowhole, Fossil Bay Lookout, Remarkable Cave, Tessellated Pavement, Tasmanian Devil Unzu, Port Arthur Lavender, and Tasmanian Chocolate Foundry. Bruni Island is just like a smaller version of Tasmania Island. Bruni is accessed only by ferry. There are many activities here like white wallabies or penguin watching, trying the best Tasmanian oysters, local beer and cheese, and free honey tasting. The state offers some of the richest natural experiences such as stunning waterfalls embedded in magnificent rainforests and national parks. Many waterfalls have sealed, flat walking tracks that are wheelchair and child-friendly to reach the base of the falls. The Mount Field National Park northwest of Hobart offers three amazing waterfalls in one go with its very popular three falls circuit including Russell Falls, Lady Baron Falls, and Horseshoe Falls. Mount Field National Park is only one hour drive from Hobart. The Three Falls Circuit is one of Tasmania's 60 Great Short Walks. The 60 Great Short Walks offer the best of Tasmania's day walking opportunities. Russell Falls is a waterfall you will likely find on most lists of waterfalls in Tasmania. This 54-meter, dual-drop fall is the most popular and most photographed waterfall in Tassie. If you can only see one waterfall in Tasmania, this is the one.
Nelson Falls is a 30-meter waterfall in Tasmania's World Heritage Area Franklin Gordon Wild Rivers National Park. The Nelson Falls Nature Trail is a wheelchair-friendly boardwalk cutting through the ancient rainforest. Lake Burberry is a popular fishing lake on the edge of Tasmania's World Heritage Wilderness Area. We drove from Hobart to Launceston via the Great Eastern Drive. It is one of our best scenic drives with so many wonderful unspoiled beaches, miles of soft white sand, and dazzling turquoise water. Bay of Fire is breathtaking. It is one of my favorite beaches in Tasmania. Launceston is a city in the north of Tasmania. It is the second most populous city in Tasmania after the state capital Hobart. Launceston was named Australian Town of the Year in 2022. Two to three days are about the right amount of time to visit Launceston. Day one is to explore around the city, Cataract Gorge Reserve, City Park, Royal Penny Adventures, Launceston Farmers Market, Bridestow Lavender Estate when in season, and the Fun Aquatic Center. Day two or three are for day trips to Tamer Valley Wine Region, Grindled in Switzerland, Georgetown, Tasmania and the village of Lower Crackpot, or even day trips to Devonport, Frasinet National Park, Binalong Bay, and Bay of Fire. If you are on a tight schedule, one day is enough to visit all the top attractions in the city of Launceston. It is a lovely walk around Launceston city with a lot of heritage architecture, some buildings were built back in 1823.
Cataract Gorge Reserve is a unique and unexpected urban secret right near the city center. You can ride the world's longest single-span chairlift up over the gorge. Cataract Gorge is a recreation hub to swim, walk, run, dine, enjoy nature, and simply relax. Launceston City Park is a park in the center of Launceston City. It is a beautiful well well-maintained park with many gardens, flowers, a conservatory, a duck pond, a children's playground, a radio museum, and especially a Japanese macaque monkey. Harvest Launceston Community Farmers Market is a Launceston icon. This is a really good place to go for fresh local food if you have some free time on a Saturday morning in Launceston. Bridestow Lavender Estate near Launceston City is one of the largest and most photographed landscapes in Tasmania. The lavender at Bridestow Lavender Estate is normally in bloom from December through to January, with peak periods usually covering mid-December to mid-January. Penny Royal Adventures is free to enter and you only pay for the adventures you choose. Activities include zip lines, cliff jumping, rock wall climbing, cliff walking, gold panning, brick tamer cruise plus Sarah Island ghosts, dark ride, and convict barefoot sensation. We had a wonderful family time at Launceston Aquatic Center which was near to our hotel. The center has warm water play inside and a big water slide and water play area outside. The Tamer Valley is a valley in Tasmania, about a 30-minute drive from Launceston City. More than 20 vineyards are lining the valley and tourists are guided by the Tamer Valley wine route. It is a picturesque journey with many vantage points to see water, rivers, and hills along the way. A couple outside that are fighting about whether it's their favorite or not. You can check out the Grindled Swiss Village. Grindled is a 15-minute drive north of Launceston in the Tamer Valley. The Swiss-themed Tamer Valley Resort at Grindled includes a range of activities including a shopping arcade, news and gift store, clothing store, golf pro shop, cafe, and bakery. Tasmania and the village of Lower Crackpot is about 1 hour 15 minutes drive from Launceston. It is a very large maze complex with 8 mazes to explore and also a big lavender farm where you can take photos for free. Nestled in a valley between Mount Lyle and Mount Owen, Queenstown with a population of 1,800 people is the largest town on the west coast region of Tasmania, Australia. It is about a 1 hour 30 minutes drive from the famous Cradle Mountain and a 3 hour and 30 minutes drive from Hobart. Queenstown's history has long been tied to the mining industry. Some top things to do in Queenstown are navigating the moonscape of the Bear Hills to Horstel Falls. You can also do a day trip to Strawntown. The Rackham Gorge is the West Coast Wilderness Railway's popular half-day tour departing Queenstown.
Walk up the Spy on Kopf lookout to get a bird's eye view of the town and its barren hills. Horstel Falls are seasonal with the best time to visit around winter or spring. The walking path is easy with beautiful views around. Iron Blow Lookout offers a bird's eye view of the open cut mine with the stains of mineral deposits streaking the pit's walls. It is an interesting stop to view a piece of local mining history with the signs telling the story of Iron Blow. Now an abandoned ghost town, the site of Linda was once a place of importance for the local mining community. It's only about 10 minutes from Queenstown. Strawn is a small town and former port on the west coast of Tasmania. It was a vital location for the timber industry that existed around Macquarie Harbour. This small village of farmers and fishermen is surrounded by 19 national parks and regional reserves. One of the most popular activities in Strawn is to take a river cruise along the Gordon River in the Tasmanian Wilderness World Heritage Area. The West Coast Wilderness Railway is a heritage train ride into the rainforest. Morrison's Huan Pine Sawmill is specializing in the unique Tasmanian timber Huan Pine. A talk and demonstration is held daily at approximately 3 p.m. I highly recommend the show The Ship That Never Was which is Australia's longest-running play telling the story of the last great convict escape from Sarah Island. There are daily performances at 5.30 p.m. from September to May. <laughs> Tasmania is famous for its amazing premium fresh fruits, vegetables, seafood, and meat products.
There are many good restaurants in Hobo. There are local farmers markets like the Salamanca Market or Farmers Market in Launcesity City selling local produce. I hope you find this video useful to plan your trip. Please like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks so much for your support. Have a safe and exciting journey.